The runes protocol on Bitcoin is finally releasing in the next couple of days. And I figured I'd make a quick video of some of the tips I have in order to get into some of these different mints and opportunities early. So in this video, I'm gonna give you guys my number one tip as well as some other tips and questions that I have personally gotten. Without further ado, guys, let's get into it. Before getting into some of the tips here, I recommend watching my getting started with runes video if you know nothing about runes. And if you watch that video, you should know that I recommend the Xverse wallet. They already have their test net for runes and I think it's important to use this wallet because supposedly the main net is going to be available right away as soon as this goes live. So if you're using a different wallet, it may or may not work as well as Xverse. The first major tip that I want to bring up here has to do with UTXOs. Now I've seen a couple of different people post about UTXOs talking about how you can split them on Luminex and I'm about to show you guys two different ways that you can actually prepare your wallets in order to maximize your opportunity. Now it's a very brief briefly and simply go over UTXOs. Imagine you have all of this Bitcoin in your wallet, guys, and you're trying to make a transaction. Well, even if this transaction might only cost 0.1 Bitcoin, if you have 0.2 Bitcoin in your wallet and it's all within the same UTXO, all 0.2 Bitcoin gets sent and then you get refunded the remainder. And what can happen is because all of your Bitcoin left in this one transaction more than what it needed to, you now no longer can make another transaction to mint an additional rune, for example. So the whole concept of splitting up your UTXOs is now taking your Bitcoin and almost putting it in different types of banks. And then that way, if you go to make a transaction of let's say 0.1 Bitcoin, it doesn't use up all of your Bitcoin and forces you to wait until that block completes for you to make another transaction. So by splitting up your UTXOs, you should be able to mint a lot more of these runes. Now, there are two different ways that you can split up your UTXOs. One is using Luminex that will go over in a little bit. And the other thing is just having multiple different wallets out there. If you use Google Chrome or Brave browser, you can actually make multiple Chrome users and be able to have different wallets on each of these different Chrome users. So on the top right corner, guys, if you're using Chrome or Brave, you can click on your icon. You can then go to add when it comes to adding different accounts or people. And when this happens, you'll be able to set up a new Chrome profile and you can hit continue without an account. And what will happen is it'll make a whole entire different Chrome user where now you can download this Xverse Chrome extension on every single one of these users. And what's really nice is all of these wallets are now separated. So if you send Bitcoin from a centralized exchange or wherever you're sending Bitcoin from, you can send it individually to each of these wallets. And inherently, it is now, in a sense, splitting up the different UTXOs. Now, all of your Bitcoin might be in the same exact UTXO UTXO for each of these wallets. But now if you have 10, 15, 20 different Chrome users, for example, each of these Chrome users will now have their own UTXO. You'll be able to mint from all of them. And if there is a restriction per wallet, now all of a sudden you already have all of these wallets ready to go. So this is one thing that you can do. And one of the nice benefits with doing this is that if there is some sort of wallet draining scam that you unfortunately stumble upon, at least it'll only drain a couple of your wallets and not all of your money if all of your money was just sitting in one wallet. The other thing that you can do, what a lot of people have been recommending, and I also recommend as well, is using Luminex, at least for a portion of your Bitcoin. What Luminex does is it allows you to connect your wallet and you're able to determine how many sats you want for each of your UTXOs. So just as an example here, let's say that I think a certain mint is coming up and it's going to cost around 100,000 Satoshis when it comes to the actual gas of that transaction and then hopefully the mint of this rune is free. If I did 100,000 and I did 10 different UTXOs, that means I would have 10 separate UTXOs be able to submit one transaction and because they're each on their own bridge or their own highway in a sense, you don't have to wait for one UTXO to finish and that block to be completed for you to now send another transaction. You can also say, hey, maybe I want to be able to send two transactions or mint two things for every single UTXO, now all of a sudden I could say it's 200,000. And then because it's 10 UTXOs, that means that I'm now able to mint two on 10 different UTXOs. So I would be able to mint a total of 20. One thing for you to realize, guys, is that the more UTXOs you create, the more this gas cost is going to be. It is still pretty minimal though. And I do think it's worth you doing. Now you're probably wondering, how do I know how much stats to have in each 
UTXO? And the answer, guys, is that it is very hard to know right now, and we're just going off these different guesses. Now, I recommend checking out this guy named Paz. He makes some very good Bitcoin content, even though he doesn't post too often, and he actually did a whole entire calculation for what we can expect. Now, based on Rune Alpha, which kind of made a Rune-based protocol, they were expecting that the amount of Satoshis for each of these transactions, if you compare it to the amount of hype and the amount of transaction costs that happened with BRC20 tokens, which was kind of the predecessor of Ruins, is going to be around 130,000 Satoshis. So you can actually go on this calculator and you can see that around 130,000 Satoshis is going to cost you around $83 simply for the gas of minting these different runes. One thing to note with that is that is just the transaction fee with all of the different hype that is going on the chain at that time. And if there's a lot of hype and a lot of people minting, the amount of Satoshis or the amount of gas for that transaction is going to be a lot higher. And if you want to ensure that you actually get this inscription or you actually get this rune without you wasting all of your money in gas, because if you don't get it, you're still out the gas money, then you are going to have to have a higher priority to make sure your transaction goes through faster. What's really nice about Mempool is that it's able to show you all of the different priority levels. And you'll see that a high priority right now is 44 and a medium priority is maybe 38. So when these runes drop and a lot of people are making transactions, potentially this medium priority can go all the way around that 130,000 number, but then the high priority might be somewhere around 150,000 or 160,000. And then if people are doing the high priority and you wanna be in front of them, maybe you wanna do something like 200,000. So this is actually something that Paz said in his video, potentially we can expect around 120 to 140,000 just for a normal transaction. And if it's something that you think is a slower mint that isn't going to mint out right away, maybe you can do that middle ground transaction. But if it's something that you think is going to sell out very quickly and you wanna get in as fast as possible, you might have to increase that Satoshi all the way to something like 200,000. And in that calculation, now all of a sudden you're looking at 127 or $130 for each one of these transactions, just the gas, not including the other fees that might come with this. Another important thing to note is that's per mint, that is per transaction. So if you're trying to mint 10 of these, you might now all of a sudden be spending $1,300 just to mint them, and that isn't including any other fees. So when I talked about having these different wallets, I'm personally having around 300 US dollars per wallet, just so I can make sure that I have more than enough money to cover the transaction cost, to make sure that my gas is high enough, to make sure that I actually get the mint if it's something that's super hyped up, and then if there's a fee attached from the actual project itself charging a premium. So I personally have about 10 to 20 wallets that have $300 worth of Bitcoin each, and each of these are Xverse wallets. And then I'm also going to have a main wallet where I'll have a larger amount of this actual Bitcoin. And I'm gonna do something like 210 to 220,000 sats per UTXO, and then that way I feel pretty comfortable with this buffer. Now, if you don't have as much funds, you might wanna do less UTX total and just have a few good UTXOs where you can ensure that you get these transactions through. Because what really sucks, guys, is spending all this money on these different transactions and UTXO management and all this stuff, and not only did you lose out on the mint, but now you lost out on all this money that you spent on gas, and you have nothing to really show for it. Now, you're probably wondering, why am I doing both of these different setups? Why am I having Chrome users with Xverse wallets all separately funded? And then why am I also doing this whole entire thing with Luminex? The reason that I'm doing this is because sometimes there can be different limitations or whitelisting for each wallet. And then on top of that, it also reduces my risk of getting wallet drained if it's on some sort of other sketchier site. And then sometimes for me, in my opinion, I can go through these different Chrome users a little bit faster. Now, that being said, I also have a main wallet that is going to have these different UTXOs managed, and that's because of how potentially these bulk 
mints for these runes can play out. What I mean by that is if you go on their main Luminex site, you'll be able to see runes bulk minting coming soon to Luminex. And I'm assuming that there are going to be different mints with the same minting style as Unisat and their BRC20 tokens. If you go to Unisat, you'll be able to click on BRC20 and you'll actually be able to scroll down to something that has not been sold out just to show you guys an example. And now when I see this, I can go to mint directly and it's going to show me the amount of tokens that I'm going to get, the amount of BRC20 tokens I'm going to get, which is 4,200. Now what's interesting and one of the things that can be quicker with having it on one wallet is you can repeat the mint. So I can say, hey, I actually want this to mint five different times. When you hit next, you'll be able to see all of these different inscriptions that you'll get. And you'll also be able to see the amount of gas or the amount of Satoshis for each of these different transactions. So for example, I have to pay 24 sats for every single one of those repeated mints. And because I'm doing five, you'll be able to see that I am paying five times 546 Satoshis, which is about a dollar. 74 each for a total fee of about $14. So I assume that some sort of similar setup is also going to happen with these different runes launches. And if you have all of these different wallets and Chrome users, it might take a little too long to go through each of these. Whereas if I have all my UTXOs properly managed and have enough Satoshis in each of them to cover each of these mints, now all of a sudden I could potentially get way more runes this way. So for me, I'm all about preparation and being prepared for all of the different scenarios. And that's why I'm personally using both of these different setups. The next thing that I wanna bring up is actually running your own node. Now, a lot of people have this misinterpretation of running your own node means your transactions are gonna be way faster and go in front of everyone's. This is not the case, guys. Bitcoin relies on this gas mechanism. And if you wanna be ahead of other people, you just simply have to pay more Satoshis. Now, what is interesting with running your own node is that there's a lower likelihood of of your transaction able to fail, as well as some other additional benefits that you can see here, such as increased privacy and security. You help benefit the decentralization of the network. You have full control over the transactions. You're also able to learn and have fun while doing this. And you never know if you're gonna need to run a node in the future for something else. And then you also have this economic and financial sovereignty. Another benefit of running your own node, which I haven't looked too in depth yet, is that you'll actually be able to etch or create your own runes through running your own node, as well as be able to mint runes from running your own node as well. And you'll never know when there isn't a front end for us to interact with, where we'll actually have to do something on this node in order to mint. Kind of like a Nat Cats type situation where a lot of people actually didn't know how to mint these and you had to go through this whole entire process. And the people that were able to actually have that knowledge and have the preparation ready were able to make a significant amount of money and it was worth their time doing Doing all this. I'm not going to cover how to run your own node in this video and instead I'm actually going to have this video in the description that you might have already seen from Paz that I talked about a little bit earlier. In this video he does a great job explaining how to actually set up your node as well as the etching that I just talked about on Signet that you're able to do if you're running your own node and then he also talks about how to actually mint ruins using this as well. So if you have some time and you're decent at following instructions it doesn't look too difficult to do and he really did put a great guide together so in my opinion it doesn't really make sense for me to just redo what he had just done uh, and instead it makes more sense for you guys to just watch this video if you want to do that that pretty much wraps up the main key tips that I have there's always a lot of other stuff that you can do such as running this node blah 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 but I think the main thing that will benefit most of the people watching this video that might not have as much time or technical background or don't have the capabilities to run their own node blah 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 is to at the minimum have multiple wallets with money in them or do the UTXO management. Because if all of your money is just on one UTXO and you have to wait for that transaction to go through before you can mint some more, now all of a sudden you're waiting 10 minutes, for example, for that block to complete. And during that time, you might miss out on a bunch of different mints. Whereas if you actually properly split all these different UTXOs, you could potentially get five, 10, 20, 30 times the amount of runes on these new token drops and that could equate to a lot of money as well as you losing a lot less in gas fees that don't actually get you the rune in the end. That pretty much wraps up the video. If you're looking to stay up to date on runes as well as different projects that are releasing,
everything, as well as just what's hot in the blockchain in general. Make sure to subscribe. I'll be trying to cover some of these different hype upcoming releases on this channel. And then also join our alpha group in the description below on Discord. Open up a support ticket. We'll give you a free trial pass where we cover a lot of this information as well. But yeah, guys, that wraps up the video. Hope it helped and I'll catch y'all later.